Before, they were known as the Lost Battalion. The 1st Battalion was part of the 36th Infantry Division fighting in Europe during World War II. After a bungled strategic decision sent them deep into German territory in southern France, the battalion was surrounded. For six days, the 275 soldiers remained trapped with dwindling airdrop supplies as the Germans threatened to wipe them out and repelled repeated rescue attempts on the ground. Hitler himself is said to have taken a personal interest in seeing the battalion completely destroyed. In a last-ditch effort, the 442nd Regimented Combat Team was sent in to break through the staunch German defenses. They would pay a steep price to come out the other side. As they emerged to find the lost battalion, it may have been to some a remarkable sight, especially in the European theater of war. 442nd was a segregated unit composed almost entirely of second-generation Japanese-Americans. After much debate between U.S. scholars and investigators, Japanese Americans were deemed patriotic enough to enlist during post-Pearl Harbor xenophobia. Yet Japanese enlistees were still treated as potential spies for their country of origin. In February of 1942, President Franklin Roosevelt issued Executive Order 9066, authorizing the relocation of Japanese, German, and Italian Americans to internment camps. Tragically, their homes, their positions, and even their businesses were confiscated during the U.S. government's witch hunt. The move was, in part, a response to fears of espionage. The measure was also tied up in the humiliation and fear Americans felt after Pearl Harbor and the subsequent string of Japanese victories in the Pacific. Japanese Americans bore the brunt of the incarcerations, with 120,000 people locked up. 11,000 German Americans suffered the same fate. Many among them were what's known in Japan as Nisei, noting citizens of Japanese heritage but native born to the United States. A portion of those Nisei made up most of the 442nd Regimental Combat Team. This infantry regiment fought primarily in the European theater. Yet even as they fought for the flag overseas, their families were not immune to internment. Many of the Nisei saw what was asked of them in Europe as a lesser of two evils. Back home, they may have joined their families in camps. The majority of Nisei had family members serving their wartime in internment camps. Still, Japanese Americans distinguished themselves in service, bringing honor to their country, and especially their patriotic families, even though they only comprised three units. Under the motto, Go for Broke, the Nisei Regiment became the most decorated unit of its size in the history of the United States military. Activated in February 1943, they had 4,000 men by April. In total, 14,000 men served as part of the unit. Collectively, this regiment would go on to win 18,000 awards over two years, including 4,000 bronze medals and 9,486 Purple Hearts. The group also received eight presidential unit citations. 21 of its members received Medals of Honor, the most prestigious military decoration in the United States Army. In 2010, surviving members from the regiment were collectively awarded the Congressional Gold Medal. Two years later, surviving veterans were honored as part of their induction into the French Legion d'Honneur. This legion recognized their contribution to the liberation of France and their courageous service in rescuing the lost battalion. The 36th Infantry Division of the Texas National Guard, better known as the Lost Battalion, was deployed to southeastern France, where the Vosges Mountains bordered Germany. The division arrived from heavy fighting in Salerno, Italy, where they were nearly overrun by Panzer tanks. Before reassignment to France, they had suffered significant casualties crossing the Rapido River in the middle of January. As 1944 drew to an end, 
the battalion did their best to repel German attacks while trying to secure the frigid woods along the French border. The situation grew worse after Major General John E. Dahlquist used his regiment to attack Germans even against his senior officer's recommendations. His ill-conceived plan put servicemen five miles into German territory with the intent to cut supply lines. The mission was doomed from the start. Not only in the depths of hostile territory, but also battling terrain and weather conditions threatened the regiment's success. Worst of all, the conditions in the Vosges Mountains were treacherous. The forests were dense, craggy, and wet with rainfall, and the air was under a constant fog with visibility at only 10 feet. By October 23rd, they had advanced despite these impossible circumstances. Now they were primed to attack. At first, the German army's response was slow. Still, things soon turned dangerous once they discovered the American regiment had no rear. As recalled by Staff Sergeant Jack Wilson, quote, no one was following us. The Germans attacked forcefully from the rear, cutting off the 1st Battalion from the rest of the Allied world. 275 men were stranded, surrounded. At least 700 German soldiers circled them. From here on out, the 1st Battalion would simply be known as the Lost Battalion. The following three days saw numerous efforts by the Texan Regiment's battalions to search and rescue the stranded battalion. Still, they were unable to cut their way through enemy lines. The Germans were simply more prepared for the fight. The Lost Battalion carried only enough supplies for one day. They were hungry and quickly running out of ammunition. The only thing in their favor was their specific location. They had the narrow advantage of high ground and slightly better visibility, situated as they were at the crest of a mountain. They dug foxholes in muddy soil to use as cover. They did their best to fight back, but mostly hid from gunfire and dodged debris from mortared trees. American pilots braved rain and fog to drop rations for the stranded battalion, including water purification pills and some, though only a few, clips of ammo to keep them in the fight. Still, their situation was dire. Reportedly, Hitler ordered his army to destroy the lost battalion swiftly. He concerned himself little with the human cost. Hope came on October 27th, when Major General John E. Dahlquist ordered the 442nd Regimental Combat Team to rescue the Lost Battalion. By the time of their assignment to France, the Nice team had already gained a reputation for being extraordinary fighters. Still, rescuing the American soldiers would be difficult in large part due to the Germans' weather, not to mention their perfect defensive positions. It was considered a suicide mission. Historians would later criticize the action for its inadequate cost-risk assessment, but also as a prime example of military racism. The Nisei soldiers were seen as more expendable than their white counterparts. As the 442nd Regiment deployed, the Lost Battalion became increasingly desperate. Fifty soldiers began considering a risky breakout attempt. Their initiative failed. Only five soldiers returned. Pilots found it nearly impossible to continue providing supplies due to the intense cloud cover. Soldiers were left with muddy water and scarce food. By nightfall, the cold threatened their survival more than anything. Their small perimeter was always under attack. The rest of the army tried sending supplies by way of artillery shells. The Texans didn't receive most of these. Many accidentally landed on the German side. For the Nisei soldiers, the journey was equally brutal, trekking through rain and mud for nearly six days. And when they weren't battling conditions, they fought German to close range. They started with 3,000 men and lost 200, while another 800 were severely wounded. The casualties mounted so fast, rearline cooks were soon given guns. 
The 442nd Regiment marched up and down mountains and hills in search. German snipers and machine guns stormed. Minefields lay everywhere. The regiment faced intense shelling as they moved further into the belly of the beast. Each step threatened to kill them. It started staying in place. Battlefield advance hinged on their heroism. For example, Private Barney Hajiro charged a hundred yards downhill, single-handedly taking up two machine gun nests and two snipers. He was only stopped after four bullets. Even those failed to take him. He later recalled the moment, quote, I didn't think about dying. Private George Sakato cried out after witnessing his friend Sabuto Tanamachi shot. Enraged, he charged, ravaging 12 foxholes and capturing four Germans. The rest of the team was inspired and in a human wave overwhelmed the enemy. Sergeant Shiro Kashino, known to his men as Cash, led from the front, volunteering to steal desperately needed rations from the Germans. Unfortunately, of his 12 men undertaking the selfless mission, none returned. Cash was shot twice. As soon as he received stints at an aid station, he demanded to rejoin his men in battle. By the end of the war, he had garnered six Purple Hearts. Once they reached the Texan battalion, they had suffered considerable losses. 20% of their soldiers were wounded, captured, or missing. Still, they had accomplished their mission. According to lore, of the first Nisei soldiers to arrive, one simply walked up to Lieutenant Marty Higgins of the Lost Battalion and offered him a lucky strike. After a grueling week of desperation, they'd been rescued from certain doom. Of the 211 Texans that survived, each remained grateful. After all, the dangerous rescue mission cost the 442nd a total of 800 men. Many Nisei veterans went on to resent their participation in what was basically an army-approved suicide mission. Even Lost Battalion leader Lieutenant Marty Higgins later confessed, quote, No one will ever be able to convince me that the men killed and wounded in our rescue can be justified. We should have been bypassed. Succeeding against all the odds, the Japanese-American soldiers brought pride to their nation, but more importantly, their suffering immigrant community. What the Nisei demonstrated, most of all, was outstanding bravery in the face of World War II's horrors. The Nisei Regiment returned to America, welcomed by President Truman's words, quote, You have fought not only the enemy, but you have fought prejudice, and you have won. Keep up that fight, and we will continue to win. To make this great republic stand for just what the Constitution says it stands for. The welfare of all the people, all the time. Due to their ethnicity, many of the 442nd Regiment's combat team members received lesser medals and honors than they should have. President Bill Clinton later upgraded the military awards, stating that, quote, rarely has a nation been so well served by a people so ill-treated. Furthermore, Texas Governor John Connolly made all surviving members of the 442nd Regiment and 1st Battalion honorary Texans as a show of gratitude.